Welcome to Mocha in the Morning, where we're adding a little flavor to your morning blend. I am your host, Miss Keisha Boyd, and I am joined by my wonderful, wonderful co-host, officially Jorge, my cafe con leche. Hola, papi. Hola. How are you? I'm fabulous. And the, um, I was telling people, like, I was in a conversation the other day with, with uh, Shalette, our producer, on the phone, mm-hmm. and um, we were talking with like a potential feature sponsor mm, and like um you know when my zoom name came up it's oh like, my gosh what was it did you forget like, to change it no I was like, I, I, that's my new name now the original oj oh. <laughs> bless your little heart, bless <laughs> your little heart. <laughs> listen there's a lot going on this yeah, week so we have so much to talk about oh my gosh the way what I, what we got to 30, girl, sir. 30. 30. That's a lot of hours. That's a lot of hours. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of conversation, a lot of infotainment. Yes. And we are very grateful for 30 shows. It's our 30th show for our I season. mean, like, we could put on the show <laughs> nonstop. You can watch it, like, all day, nonstop, and then take a half a day and still keep watching it. If we just play every single show. Yeah. Day. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Well, we're going to keep it going for this 30th show with our steamers and piping hot segment. Of course, our Mocha Minute and Mocha Moment. So, but, of oh, course. but first, look, child, it's a 30th show. That's cool. Listen, where your coffee? Right All right. The first coffee, <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> oh, bro. His Majesty. Cut your mouth. Babu, I haven't seen you because... I got yours. Oh, oh I want it now. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know we have to have a um a okay. hers and hers. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love it. Mocha in the morning is sponsored by Bill Curry Ford. Hello and welcome back to Mocha in the Morning, where we are adding a little flavor to your morning blend. Once again, I'm your host, Miss Keisha Boyd, and I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Officially Jorge, who is going to bring us our steamers for our 30th episode in season three. Yes, we have so uh, many steamers for you today. Super fun. We have herstories being made. I mean... High notes are being taken. So, are you ready for your steamers? Yes, give it to us, babe. Do it. Check this out. Like I just said, herstory has been made at MIT. They have their very first student body president, who is an African American lady. Yes, if you yeah. go to um because uh, because of them we can dot com, they uh, have the story. So. How awesome is that? Yes. That is awesome. That's amazing. Congratulations, sister girl. All right, come through MIT, Miss Thing. All right. Check that out. So congratulations to her. Super awesome. And her name is Danielle Getters. All right. Get it, get it to get the name right. Get it, get it together. Ah. <laughs> oh, and another fabulous Mocha Marvel who's like she's already been to the stars and back. But Venus. Williams is launching a skincare line uh, for the color people like us. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it's really super awesome. So it's, it's like sunscreen for the melanated. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Venus. We appreciate you, honey. We do appreciate you looking out. You know what people don't realize? And you can read that story on the griot.com. Um, but people don't realize that, you know, even with her super successful, uh, tennis career. I mean, remember she got the like $60 million deal or Reebok and that yeah. was like, the highest contract like ever. And she was like a little girl. Yeah. Um, and, um, and at the same time, people don't realize that's an educated woman. She got, she's got her degree. 
I mean, yeah. she went to school for business management mm -hmm. and um, all while having this amazing tennis career. And uh, that's a boss move. I'm telling you, how smart is that? Yes, yes. That's an ace. That's what we say in tennis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and check this out. Mm -hmm. oh, and you know, I love, I love, love all this. I'm even going to show you guys like a little clippy clip during the steamer. Okay. And I've been talking about this with some of my designer friends about, oh, wouldn't it be awesome if you were like to produce like this virtual fashion show? Oh my goodness. So uh, the designer, that's Anitha Muvemba? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, because of course, fashion and runway shows have been canceled across yeah. the board, well, she came up with the most fabulous way to put on a 3D virtual runway show and internet. She done broke the internet with the runway oh, show. The internet, okay, the internet. It was amazing. Did you see the way, like, the non the models moving? And, the, and the, I was like, yes, yes, yes. It was amazing. Just, I, I was, mean, let me tell you, you can't, I'm telling you, we are some kind of magical. That was magical and it was just, I was, it was stunning. It really was. It, it was, was stunning. Because yeah, like, you just kind of envisioned the model, but like, mm -hmm. you, I mean, I mean, the, oh man, the, I'm telling you, I mean, that, <laughs> I don't even know what huh. It was great. Right. It was just, I thought it was super awesome. So go to Black Enterprise. Uh, to read that story and echo, yeah. but they got the internet uh, fixed again because we're uh -huh. on there. <laughs> uh, to bring you the news, and you can go to the grapevine. That's where I heard it from. Um, well, the other Miss Ross yeah. <laughs> is coming through, and of course, her uh, film uh, is out tonight on Netflix, The High Note, and I even heard her single. Uh, on, the, on Spotify the other day, I was like, oh, that, oh, that's the other You know what? Yeah, because I was, remember, I was like, is that, like, is she actually singing in this movie? But she, yeah. I think she's singing in this movie. And let me tell Go you, ahead. though. Yeah, and let me tell you, because everybody knows for her to be an actress and super funny, and, of course, she is a fashion, uh, a fashionista. Yes. But, I mean, whoo, she got a lot of nerve, and to be able to come up with that courage I mean, because mm -hmm. we all know who her mama is. Yeah. And, you, know, you better do it, Miss Tracy. Yes, congratulations on stepping out there, girl. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm definitely going to support it, for sure. Yeah, I love that child. Yes, I love it. All right. We have so much more on Mocha in the Morning on our 30th episode coming right back at you. Stay tuned, because we are going to continue to add some flavor to this morning blend. We'll be right back. Mocha in the Morning is brought to you in part by the Portico Cafe, where conversation, connection, and community create change. All right. Welcome back to Mocha in the Morning, where we're adding a little flavor to your morning blend. I am your host, Miss Keisha Boy, and it is that time for Piping Hot well, I am joined by my Mocha Marvel sisters. They are so beautiful today. You will see us all in a little color scheme of a little yellow, a little orange. We're representing the sun rays. It's summertime, y'all. So, Miss Kenya Woodard. Good morning. It's Friday. Aren't you glad? Dr. Jen Dobson. Hi, everybody. Good morning. It is such a great day. Very happy to be here. Uh, Shalette Davis. Good morning, Mocha Marvels. Happy to see you on our last show of the season. And of course, Miss Kicking It with Kia Shakur. What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. And I am really sad this is our last show of the season. I'm going to miss everybody. Oh, Aww, how sweet. All right, y'all. That is correct. We are ending our season three, our third season. This is our 30th show of the season. 
Woo, we've been rocking and rolling, y'all. Like, for real, for real. It's amazing. All right, excuse me. Let's get right into our piping hot segment because we have much to discuss. Um, and it's going to get lengthy in some topics. And of course, we all know, you know, we're just going to go ahead and get jump right into it. Weaponizing black bodies, black people, it's, it's, it is, it is, it, you know, I, I put a post up yesterday that basically I just said, I'm just speechless. I'm speechless because the words are not changing anything. Like, we've got to be about some action. The words, I mean, these these computer protests, keyboard protests, they're not, do- I mean, I don't know what to do. I don't know what the solution is, but this is crazy. So we've had several cases. Um... The first that we're going to talk about, a pastor in Georgia lied and said a a black man kidnapped him, um, but he was trying to cover up that he was in the hotel with a, with a, uh, with a gay, uh, somebody help me, anybody, Kenya, please, what? Yeah, so basically this guy procured the services of a male sex worker and um, <clears throat> excuse me, things didn't go as planned. And unfortunately for him, he decided to blame a kidnapping on two black men to cover up, you know, his, you know, deeds or whatever. A, a, a hot mess. There's a lot of folks who are borrowing from the susan smith playbook lately and it makes me very mad yes Uh, they are real quick shout out to kenya for making prostitution sound so classy sex work work. sex work is work is work (laughs) okay all right and then once again here in florida a mother first of all using the said that two black men kidnapped her son and he was later found drowned in a lake. Kia, like... Yeah, this story is extra disturbing um, because the child was special needs and with everything going with COVID, she has had to be a hands-on 24-7 parent and that can be overwhelming, especially especially with a special needs child. Um, I have a special needs child. I, I totally get it. It can be hard. But the fact that instead of asking for help, she tried to drown her child. And it is, it's actually caught on video from, from somebody's doorbell ring cam of her shoving this boy into, the, into the, one of those canals between like the subdivisions and then running around in a circle like, oh my God, and then she walks away. It, it's a disturbing situation, but she did try to blame it on two, uh, two black men, very Susan Smith-like, like Kenya said. And it was found out pretty immediately that she was full of garbage and they found her son's body. It's, it's just very tragic. She's extra sick because this was her second attempt. Wow. What was the, what was the first attempt? What was the first attempt? The, actually, the video is from the first attempt. The second attempt is something else, is the, is the, the latest one. That's my understanding. Oh, my. Okay. I'm even more blown away and heartbroken now that she tried twice. Is she, I, I know we want to say, if that, I guess as a parent, you want to think, is she mentally disturbed? Is she mentally disabled? What was going on? But there really is... What, there's, there's no excuse for it? No. no. I'm no. gonna say this several times um, for this show. May was Mental Health Month, and because of the situation that we're in right now, because of required social distancing and kids being um, schooled at home, it's, it, it's vitally important if you are feeling some kind of way, if you're feeling um, homicidal, <laughs> Please call right. somebody. This, that's just crazy. This is yeah. Crazy. We definitely support that here on the show. So. Yeah, it's pretty sad, man. And then um, moving on, you know, continuous weaponizing of, of, of black men, especially to um, a white man at a WeWork gym in, in Minneapolis called the police on these young men who were in the gym. Like, what was... Uh, Shalette, what what was happening there? Literally, like, I'm just like, how are people not watching the news, sir? Like, the same week, this, uh, another person is in trouble for calling the cops or calling an authority on people of color. When you got no business, stay out of people's business. Call a manager. It is not your job to police my body, period. Absolutely. Dr. Jen? 
well, we're always seen, seen as being people that don't belong. Um, and it doesn't matter almost any environment. We could be in urban areas and they still consider us not being, um, you know, welcome anymore, you know, and now that we're seeing a lot more gentrification. So that's pretty much what's going on between the gym situation and with the situation with the woman in the park. Um, you know, they don't, they don't feel like we belong in those situations. They certainly um, don't want us to be there. And the minute we say or do anything that goes against anything that they they like, then we become the issue. And the thing for me is that I think that it, it shows that white people know that black people are not treated the same, which is why they use things like two black men stole my kids or a black man took me to a hotel because they know that we are seen as a threat by the authorities as, the, as bad people. So, you know, it's unfortunate, but it's the way that it's been for centuries. Absolutely. And, and, and that, I mean, that, that, you know, this is the Amy Cooper, the, you know, the Karens of the world, right? She mm -hmm. did that because she really knew that she could get away with it. Now, she's not sorry that she called the cops on Christian Cooper. She's sorry she got caught. She's not apologetic about what she did. She meant what she did. She knew what could happen if she did that. She, exactly. she was very intentional. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Keisha. We, talk, we talked about this off air, is that you know, this could have just been two people yelling at each other, cussing at each other. Don't tell me what to do. I can do what I want. It could have just ended at that. Instead, you literally called the cops to put him in his place. Because that's what it sounded like to me. That you didn't like this man was showing some kind of assertiveness because, you know, he didn't like what you were doing. Which is annoying. Fine. Whatever. But you decided to use the police like they were your personal bodyguards to beat up the black man who was being assertive? Come on now. You, you... I can't the police are the slave patrol you know they've always been the slave patrol girl so ooh, the ooh, white people are still using them as the slave patrol <laughs> wow now that's a word right there that's a word that's a whole word i mean because at the end of the day i mean this is this is modern day lynching that you know this is this is this is modern day lynching i mean we're gonna you know we can we can go ahead and roll into to to, to the george floyd george floyd um situation and in Minneapolis, this man was killed in broad daylight because he put his knee, his knee on his neck for nine minutes, even though the man was like begging for him to take his knee off. His, like how, I'm not even going to say how do you do that as a human being because I understand that they have a sick, twisted mind and they devalue our lives. Um, and that's basically, you know, once again, Ha if we're not in a situation in society of recording things and things being documented, this could be another situation where this is just another black man dead. Mm -hmm. And the police are going to say, oh, he tried to do this while he was, he was handcuffed. It was four of you. Like I recorded I from start to finish, from the very, very beginning of the incident, like the very, it's very beginning of it when he's just sitting in the car and the police pulled up. It's recorded from start to finish and he wasn't resisting arrest. He wasn't being aggressive. He was following and being compliant. It was everything. So, sorry, can not me interrupt you? I saw you making the face. I just wanted to say that, you know, it's recorded from the beginning of the end. There is no, I don't touch me, get off of me. It's none of that. It's none of that. Like, why did he, why did they even put him, th throw him to the ground? Wait, they, that's the sad thing. We don't know. And But here's my problem. Here's my biggest issue with this. I mean, hey, we know it's happened often, right? So, so we're hearing about this all the time. We all know about it. My biggest problem now is that we have to jump in at this point. Like, we have to start saving our own. Like, I feel like, and I understand how scary that might sound, and I understand that that puts ourselves in, in a scary situation, but a prime example was, uh, and I want to say it was Japan, and the police were very rough on a gentleman in Japan, and they started kicking him and hitting him, and it was at, like, a sporting event. The fans jumped in and attack the police for being brutal to this man to let them know like hey, wait a minute 
we don't tolerate this type of behavior from you. You're supposed to protect and serve, but the minute we see that you're being too aggressive, we're going to save our own. And I think as Black people, as scary as that might sound, I think it's time for us, maybe one person records, and the rest of us need to be jumping in and saving ourselves because nobody else is going to do it. Yeah, Dr. Jean, I love her, her Black Panther uh, approach to uh, these things, but but to her point though, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure, you know, what exactly we can, what, what more we can do or how much more we're supposed to tolerate. But what I do know is that uh, the police, especially in larger cities, they're militarized. So, um, you know, there's also the, you know, the threat of us, you know, doing something to protect ourselves and then them returning fire on us that's worthy of, you know, a World War III. So I don't know if we're actually capable or apt to, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, response, to be honest with you. I'm not sure exactly, though, what we're supposed to do. I mean, how many more are we supposed it's, to it's, be? It's, 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 a, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't type of situation. But um, really quick, I just want to say, I'm kind of done with the supporting the Black Lives Matter. I'm going to support organizations who are highly for training police officers better, stronger background checks for these people, stronger education for these people. If you're gonna be a police officer, it shouldn't be some quick two-year course. You should be going through extensive training, psychology training, understanding how to deal with the community, everything before you're even allowed to carry a gun. You're carrying a gun and we're asking simple humans to protect and serve us and they're not educated, trained, and they know nothing about psychology or people. How, how does that make any sense in, in 2020? Well, the problem is the psychology of the police force, um, whether you are um, a person of color or you are a white person um, and the police force in America, there is a culture that creates this environment of fear um, amongst police officers that continue to weaponize black bodies and people of color. So they they go above and beyond and um, these these methods of apprehending criminals um, that end up killing folks. And it's, it, it is a um, corruption of their psyche and it's gonna take a lot of hard work. And there is training that's going on, but these people have to believe in that training. They're just trying to check a box and, and carry on with their they, lives. They really What's really happening, the revolution needs to happen in places like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. That's when the, when the minds are being changed on social media, not in a workshop that they have to just check off as uh, being uh, exactly. trained, trained up on. Well, in Minneapolis, in Minnesota, Keisha, I don't want to take your the, the host part away from it, but in Minneapolis now, stuff has gone nuts as far as rioting. It has gone from we want justice to now people are looting and burning down buildings. That and, that's, and that's not the answer. That is not the answer to loot um, and riot. That is not, that, 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 that's, that does nothing for the movement. That does nothing for this young man's life. So that's just, that's just ignorance to me. It's nothing uh, for the community because a lot of people are employed at these businesses that you guys are burning down. Right. Like, yeah, it's just not, that's just not the answer. Jen, what were you going to say? Yeah, I, I, I don't think so either. I mean, A, that's not the answer, but B, if you're going to riot and things like that, like someone mentioned online that why not riot the police stations? I mean, why not go there and pick it there? And yeah, that's a sketch. I know. Yeah, I feel you. But I mean, if you're going to riot, <laughs> yeah. They tried that and they vandalized a bunch of police cars. And that didn't go. It didn't end well. I know it's just one of those things. It's, it's you know, I like like um somebody said it's it's a catch twenty two. I mean, what are we supposed to do? I mean, do we just sit back and do nothing? Um, the, people I think are rioting because they don't know what else to do. We don't have any true black leaders as a whole. I mean, we have a few, but I mean, who's really? We don't have any Malcolm X's of the world. We have Malcolm X. We have Malcolm X. You know what? You cut it out. We have Listen. Malcolm X. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Listen. I'm Here's sorry. one thing I will say, um, you know, and, and this is our last show of this season, but we're, like I said, we're still going to be doing some informational bold roasts and things like that throughout to keep you guys informed. And one that, uh, that I, I'd like to have, and we'll say this, uh, Brian Gordon with Tactical Society. I think that I'm, you know, I talked to him last week or the week before and I was like, dude, you know, he's like, we've got to talk about, you know, guns and safety and arming ourselves because it is you need to arm yourselves. 
Yeah. If you're not, I, I believe that, that you should arm yourself in these times because they're dangerous times. You need to be able to protect your family um, and yourself while you are here in these streets, okay? Um, and no, I'm not saying that you need to pull them on, you know, law enforcement, anything like that. But these are ev- like these everyday vigilante people who feel like they can do what they want. You need to be able to protect yourself. So, I mean, that's a whole nother conversation. But I mean, I'm in line with, look, y'all see my, my Black Power earrings today because, you know, I, I'm with I'm with I'm with it, Jen. I am with it. Well, let's look. Let's go. <laughs> Jen at the head of the line. She ready to let's, go. Let's let's go. I mean, I, I mean, because I mean, I I, I just I, it's it's a it's a white America, um, and like Jorge say, they created the problem. They need to fix it, um, but they're not interested in fixing it, fixing it. It doesn't benefit them to fix it because they don't have to fix it. Well, A, if, you, if, if you're fixing it, A, you're acknowledging that you're the problem, which whoever wants to do that. And then B, you have to, if you truly want to fix it, you have to acknowledge all of the wealth that you gain from it mm-hmm. and maybe have to start putting that back into the black community because you can't just say it's a problem. Oh, it's a problem, but we're going to keep all the money that we made from the problem that we created. Yeah. So, it's an ongoing conversation. It's an ongoing battle that we, as excuse me, as a people, as a community, are going to, you know, continue to have to just just fight through it. I just, you know, there is no answer right now. There is no, there. we just don't have the answer. But, you know, we just got to do what we can to, to keep our babies and our, our, you know, men and women, boys and girls safe. All right. Now, moving on to our uh, COVID-19 uh, did, listen, 100,000 deaths and your president, the, the man that sits in the White House with the orange hair. He is roasting reporters for wearing masks. I don't understand the psyche of that person. I don't. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand. I don't know what you want us to say. I don't, I don't know. Don't, there is nothing. I think, he, I think he purposely tries to keep us confused. I really do. I, I think Trump is, He's a lot smarter than he comes off. I, I gotta say, he's very strategic. And so, you it's know, there's, there's a method to his madness. So, you know, what it is, I'm not sure. I haven't figured that out yet, but there's something to it. Maybe it's, it's, it's deflecting. Maybe, maybe they're, they're taking our attention because he does distract us and distract most people from what the real issues and things that are, that are happening for sure. So, well, I mean, he, I mean, he basically from, from, you know, he's, he's been seen many times in situations where he should have been wearing a mask and he wasn't. And I think that's his way of saying, I don't care. Um, I'm going to do what I want because I'm the big boss. Um, and you minions can wear a mask or not. Um, and then now he had to come back and say, well, I don't think masks should be worn to kind of make a, a reason for why he doesn't do it when we see everybody else, you know, actively doing it. I, I, he's unraveling. Know. He's unraveling. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. I mean, now he's trying to block how social media works because they censored a couple of his tweets. He don't want, he's making fun of reporters and wearing masks. He's making fun of Joe Biden and wearing a mask. He, he, it's gotten to the point now, the MAGA people supporting him, y'all will just support anything. It doesn't even, it's not even about, Nothing. It's just y'all just y'all just like him as a person, so you guys are gonna support him. It has nothing to do with anything else. Exactly. He and is campaigning. I was just getting ready to say that. I was just getting ready to say it's See? election season. <laughs> it is election season. He is campaigning. He is politicizing a device. He's politicizing PPE. Like you, you're, you need to wear a mask in public. Yes. Period. Yes. And for him to get on camera this week and roast that reporter saying he couldn't hear them. Oh, and the, the reporter was wearing it because it was politically correct. That is, that's a political move. He's campaigning. And what he's doing is he's emboldening um, the stupidity level of people who will go out and go to a huge pool party out west somewhere and then put, and put the, their, the people there in danger and the lives of others in danger. He's just perpetuating a culture of stupidity and he needs to be gone. I'm just, I'm over it. Now, aren't they fact 
fact-checking his Twitter accounts now? That's what I heard this morning, I think. They are fact-checking it, but they haven't really developed a system on how they're going to continue to do it. But I feel like if they fact-check him, it needs to be fact-checking for all politicians. You can't just do the president, because a lot of these politicians are out here saying some weird stuff. If we are fact-checking everybody, I'm all for it. If we're only fact-checking the president, that sets a very weird precedent that my Republican side of my brain is like, nah, we can't do that. We need, it needs to be anybody who is in an office needs to be fact-checked. I'm not, yeah, I'd be okay with that. Fact-check them all. They're all liars. I want to know what they're lying about. <laughs> You need, to, you need to be able to feel, look, figure out if the lie is a lie. Right. I want to know, right? Like, as soon as I read it, oh, that's a lie. Never mind. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be convenient? Like, just say, this tweet was a lie. Next. Okay, that tweet is a Wait a minute. Lie. Would you guys love it if the PolitiFact people were doing it and under the Twitter it said, pants on fire, or this is semi-true, or this is right. a little lie. Like, that would be awesome. Yes, like, okay, okay. Just a little well, something. Just a, just a little something to help us out. We need a little bit more convenience on this lie and truth thing. Right. All right. Yeah. Listen. So, obviously, you know, Trump is who he is and doing what he does, and that's okay, whatever. I just pray that we all get out and vote some type of way uh, in November. All right, now let's let's um, move on to a little bit of, of an upbeat topic. You know, it's all good in Black Hollywood, you know, because we got to have our little, you know, entertainment and sports. Um, so, yeah, so I, so... <laughs> Oh, you like that? What? What? What happened? What, what happened? happened with the one twelve and Jagged Edge versus? I popped in for five minutes and I was like, mm, mm, mm. "My patience! I don't have the patience for this." Mm -mm, no, ma'am. Nope. And I could have been. It could have been great. Two kid was like, "Mm." -mm. I tap. No, because it's so funny because I, I tweeted out, oh, it's versus one to versus Jagged Edge. Me and my right. husband listening to it. Keisha said, mm -mm, this is a mess. I wrote back, girl, I am in my room watching Frasier already because I did not have the time. <laughs> it was just, it was bad. It just, and that's what killed these verses about when the audio is not good. And they keep saying, oh, well, it was this reason, this reason. Like, well, Jill Scott and Erica Badu were fine. So, oh, and let's not talk about the uh, the Beanie Man and a uh, oh, oh goodness, that was, was so good. That was the Nancy best Killer? one. Nancy Nancy Killer, Killer, yeah. that, time. that was the best one. I mean, I love Jill and Erica. It was great, but Beanie Man and Bounty Killer. Oh, oh, and oh the Bounty Killer. I'm sorry, it was Bounty Killer. Killer. Oh my Clearly god, I, I missed it, but I heard so many people like, "Girl, we were like, it was great." Here's, here's a really fun fact, because um, uh, Swiss Beats was on the Joe Budden podcast explaining how the process works. When you sign up to do a versus battle, they send you an entire package, like a giant box of all the audio equipment you were supposed to use. You are only supposed to use that audio equipment. They then go through five testings separately and then together to make sure the live is good when they go live. But they have no control over when people start adding extra stuff onto their sound. And now Swiss is making a rule saying, if you do not use only the stuff that we provide you, we are cutting it off right there. Because it's damaging the brand at this point. I agree with that. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Very wise. Yeah, yeah. That that is a very wise thing. Because honey, I was like, I don't know what's going on. I but but on the upside though, uh, Jagged Edge was serving up some nice eye candy though. I will say that. <laughs> they, look the, they look the same. King is the wild. twins, baby. The twins. <laughs> Beards. Yes. Oh. One twelve look old as all get out. They look old. Yeah, we're old. Yeah. Swim no more. Listen, <laughs> it's okay though. Oh, he's still cute. Listen. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, okay. So let's talk about uh, Tiffany Haddish and her mermaid confessions. Okay. <laughs> mermaid confessions. I like it. <laughs> Tiffany was like, "I'm a married common," and I'm like, "So that that little day thing wasn't a commercial joke? Like y'all really dated?" They've been dating. Well, we knew they were dating. I mean, but are they've they been true? dating for a minute. Remember when she was on the Wendy Williams show and, and they asked about her and Common, but it was like kind of like a little jokey joke. They've been dating since before that. They've been dating since they starred together in the kitchen. I don't know if you guys know when that movie exactly. came out, when she was with Melissa McCarthy and yeah. 
uh, white woman's name. She was actually decent in that movie, but they've been dating since then. But I hate this couple. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And I need common. Common, stop running through all the good black women because you're ruining them. Kind of ruined um uh, uh Serena for a little bit, but she got back up. She was cool. Angela Rye ain't been seen since y'all stopped dating. Like, stop ruining our good black women. I okay, do is it, not agree with that. Is they it really his fault them. though? Is it really his fault? Because remember, everybody's saying that he's still carrying the damage from whatever happened with him and Erica. Erica by moons ago. Moons ago, right? Well, you know, if you look into Erica eyes, you know, if you look into Erica Badu eyes, you change, right? Look at Andre 3000, look at Common, they don't come back the same. So, <laughs> Common has been changed since Erica. Love of my life. What about what she did to Andre 3000? Girl. He started wearing knit caps and back. Girl. And he had a, listen, Erica, Erica, I wouldn't look Erica in the eye, okay? <laughs> the cars in the summer. He started acting real weird, yeah. So I have a problem. Listen, I'm just glad Common dating a black woman. He loving the crew. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> She's right about loving that. Loving the crew. He does. He kind of runs through the same circle of women. Like if it, I mean, I'm glad he's dating black women. I get it, but he. I was like, just date a regular person. person. Just go meet a regular person that's not yeah. in the spotlight. That's what he, he needed. Yeah, he's like, a regular girl. He must be really magical at conversation, right, guys? It's I mean, yeah. I mean, can you imagine this conversation? Yeah. Can you imagine that conversation? He's coming all off the, the righteous dome and stuff. You know, Rashid, not common. Rashid. Yeah, the you righteous know? dome. <laughs> yeah, the righteous dome. That's what we'll call this, it. This is, yeah, this is a family okay. show. This is a family show. All right, all right, listen. <laughs> Now, Beyonce, the Houstonians, Beyonce and Megan The Stallion, okay, have a number one hit, Savage. Hey, I see you, Jen. Hey. Savage is That's my song. song. I love that song. I play it all the time in my car. Me too. And it's number one. And Beyonce sent her some flowers, some pink and white roses to celebrate their number one hit. Like, can you imagine, like, Megan The Stallion's like, I got a number one song with Beyonce. Right. Like some, I was freaking out. <laughs> girl, I'm like, that is, I can't wait till this coronavirus is over because that video is going to be fire. Yes. Yeah. Fire. Yeah. But it's a, it's a good example, another good example of how generous uh, and thoughtful, you know, Beyonce, I mean, she's Beyonce. You know, some people would be like, Meg didn't send her flowers, you know, <laughs> but yeah. she's, just, she's not like that at all. And she's very thoughtful and, you know, just, you know, grateful, obviously, uh, to, to have partnered with uh, Meg on that hit. Uh, it's a lot better showing than that other Black couple that hit number one earlier this month. <clears throat> Things <laughs> kind of went away with that one, but yeah, whatever. Who is this? Uh, uh, Doja Cat and Nicki Minaj, oh, they hit number okay. one. Okay, we're, we're not doing that right now. <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh, I don't even know. Know. That's a whole she separate conversation with those, the whole Doja Cat thing. It's a whole separate end conversation. So for the Beyonce thing, I love that Megan's song is now, how long has it been top? Two versions have been top? Three, what, maybe, eight, yeah. two, two, three weeks. Eight months? Months? It's been less than like oh, two so, weeks, right? Yeah, well, yeah, they, no, the, you mean the Savage? The, the Savage, savage and the regular one have been running the radio game and the TikTok yeah, game right, right. for the past eight months now. So congratulations to them. And we're not we're really not gonna talk about the Doja Cat thing, right? We're not gonna talk No, we're not. Okay. We're gonna move on. So congratulations <laughs> okay. to those Houstonians. Naomi Osaka is making the Munties. She is snatching all the bags and has surpassed Serena Williams as the highest paid female athlete. Wow. Whoa. That's amazing. Like, I think she signed a deal for like 30 something million dollars, like the, from her paid and not a deal, but her paid endorsements and things have like reached that, that, that mark. And, um, she is what? 22, 22. 22. Look, Naomi, I'm going to let you finish, but I'm sorry. I'm hating. I am. I am. I'm so, I can't help it. I, I'm a, I am a Serena Williams fan. Naomi Osaka doesn't say brand to me. She looks kind of like the girl who never learned how to do her hair in high school. But girl. she's an athlete, and that's great. And I'm sorry. No, it's true. I can't, like, I'm not buying nothing. Like, I'm sorry. Like, for athletes, great. you're great. Awesome. So I hope she's selling a lot of 
tennis rackets and tennis balls, but she can't be like, oh my god, no, driving a BMW oh. or something. I'm serious. What? I'm sorry. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I had to pull my Kia room. out for this one. <laughs> She is, she is a black girl living in Japan. Like she's more Japanese than she is black. Like she looks like us, but she's more Japanese. So maybe that's why they haven't like glammed her up, Americanized, poofy ponytail, something. But I still think it's great. She's doing great things. She's not on the pole. She's not on a reality <laughs> show. She's not on Love Hip Hop. It's fantastic. I mean, you know, can we all agree right. on that? Yeah, you know what I think is great about it? Because <laughs> in Japan, they, they well, from what I've been told, they have an issue with black or half black Japanese people. And I think that she will start to bring change to the country as being a black athlete in Japan, um, as a Japanese black athlete. So I think for that reason, it's a really good thing because it'll start to, because there, there's a lot of half black people in Japan and they're treated really poorly. Yeah. Um, so hopefully this will start to change things there for a lot of the um, black children that live there to have some hope of, you know, being assimilated in the culture there. So I think that's a great reason. Yeah, and not to mention that, you know, this kind of thing is exactly what Serena's been working for. She's been, you know, trying to open these doors for other Black men athletes to walk through. And, right. you know, so they can get their money and become household names and big brands, Chalette. So, you know, whether <laughs> the edges are laid or not. Naomi gonna sell a lot of things in Japan and get all that yen, but I'm sorry, I ain't gonna see you. gonna see her, like, I mean, I... I well, eventually, I'll eat my words next retire. season. I will. I'll eat my words next season, but I don't see it. She <laughs> won two grand slams in Japan. They worship the ground she walks on. So, I mean, it's, Good it's for a Japan. great start. Yeah. <laughs> who's that other? There's, who's oh that Chinese? God. That Chinese basketball player who's really popular in China. Same difference. All right, that's awesome. You know what? Here, what sorry. is happening to Shalette? We're gonna uh, have an intervention with Shalette off the show. I hate it. Naomi, congratulations, girl. Right, Naomi congratulations. represents the, Chinese, the Japanese and the and the Haitian Sa passe. Hey, all right. Nabule. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'm not Haitian. I am from I'm from I'm part Georgia and part Georgia. Okay. <laughs> listen. <clears throat> that that part. Um, listen. <laughs> we we have had an amazing, amazing time, uh, as always, with our Mocha Marvel ladies. Y'all, I love y'all so very much. So very much. And we still have a little more conversation with the internet, the uh, Insecure Cafe coming up, too. But uh, hey, 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 hey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have a guest that popped in. Who yeah, is before it? everyone leaves, everybody, hey. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Love you, Charlie. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, wifey, for like getting in the uh, getting getting in getting the yen in for me. I had to get the comment I, about the yen in. My husband. I heard Serena in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so disturbed right now. <laughs> oh. All right, ladies. Thank you so much. We appreciate you, and we will see you. Season four. Have a great summer. Happy summer. Be safe. Be safe. Bye. Love you. Hey, thank, you guys. thank you, contributors, for adding flavor to our morning blend. Absolutely. Our morning blend. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Stay black. Stay black.
Your Mocha Minute is brought to you by BlackInTheBay.com, your online connection to everything that's Black in the Bay. What's up? It's your girl Kia, and we have the Insecure Cafe coming up, and there's a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. And also, maybe really miss going on vacation because that vacation Molly and Andrew are on looks fantastic. So we'll get to see Andrew meet Andrew's family for the first time. We'll also see how she is dragging Issa on her vacation, even though Issa's not even there. And we will get to see the amazing Kim Fields pop out of nowhere. I love these cameos that Issa Rae is doing for Insecure. So please tune in, get ready. We're going to have a great and fun conversation on Insecure Cafe. See you there. Good morning, Mogul Marvels. Happy Friday. Today I want to share with you guys a fun and easy way to put together a grazing platter that your friends and family will love. And that my friends is how you make a beautiful platter. I hope you make one for your next family gathering. Be sure to follow me on all my social platforms. I am the Fun Foodie Mama. I'm setting a timer. Two minutes. We got two minutes per topic. We got six topics. Let's do it. So let's Ooh, we go. got a lot of popping hot. That's a long time. Lovely. Let me roll it. Are you in Kenya? On behalf of Milk in the Morning, we want to give you, um, as a token of our appreciation, we want to give you this diverse edge um, brush because we appreciate you and your edges, but we would really prefer for them to be laid Thank on set. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Very, very funny. <laughs> But this is really cute. Thank you, Jorge. <laughs> Rolling it. Do it again. Do it in reverse. One more time. God. That's cute. Yeah. So that's uh, the, apparently you have one, but I haven't received it yet. The other thing is to... That do you, was Shay. Do you want to... Um, <laughs> My mic sounds nice. Just one. Yep. Okay. Good. No, it's still number. Okay. I can cover it a little bit. Look, no, we can fix that. Here we go. Perfect. Here we go. Oh. You gotta dip it though. If you dip it, Kenya, so okay. oh, I turned you down just so you know, but you're. But you ain't even dipped towards that. Because you know I make a mess. Does anybody have any kind of drops or anything? Drops. Anybody? Does anybody? Drops. 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 Your chalet. Shh, shh, shh. Yes, mute. <laughs> okay. Yeah, listen, I'm trying to remember us little people when he gets to the soul train. I don't know. Now, I see, Jen is kind of mom. She's like, she got her some studio time, yes. and it was like all that. I love her. <laughs> And Congratulations so you know, to him. And all about the numbers. He has a seven. And I, for one, am so excited for the holiday. Happy holiday. <laughs> Let's spread it here. You know what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We want to wish you a wonderful, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, happy Hanukkah. Thank you so much for being a part of our Mocha in the Morning family, tuning in every Friday. We love it. Cannot wait to see your Christmas gift pictures, your food pictures, and your super messy drunk New Year's Eve picture. Happy New Year! <laughs> the dynamic duo yeah. is back. The with sun is shining. Yeah. Good and the best thing you 
Music Awards. Very exciting. My bottles. Uh -huh. Very exciting. <laughs> 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 I think I'm gonna work on an album. <laughs> oh my goodness what a show we talked about some heavy topics a little little fun in there but it was definitely conversation to be had and listen this is our 30th episode in season three, season three, 30th episode. I could not be happier um, to to be with all of my Mocha Marvels, my wonderful co-host, especially Jorge, and all of my Mocha Marvel girls who come on for Piping Hot, our great producer, Shalette, Kia, Kenya, Dr. Jen, Kiva, all of you. I mean, for tuning in, watching us, we are so immensely grateful. Um, we'll continue to have content for you throughout the summer, doing some bold roles to talk to some great people in our communities. Um, and just, you know, anytime you feel like you want to get a little dose, a little flavor to your morning blend, just go host a watch party. Listen, it will be amazing at any time of the day, morning, noon, night, whatever. You know, we'll continue to add a little flavor to your morning, your night, or your evening. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, because trust, there's always something brewing. I'm okay. Always. There's <laughs> always something brewing. And go join our group too, so you can get in on some of our conversations that we'll be having. But listen, our Mocha Marvels, we love you. Please, please share with your family and friends. Um, we are so excited to come back for our fourth season of Mocha in the Morning. As long as you will have us, we'll be right here in front of your face talking it up. And hopefully we'll be back in our studio uh, so we can, you know, be face to face because I miss I seeing you. <laughs> My teeth. Okay. All right. <laughs> Follow us on all of our channels at Mocha Morning Show. We love you. We appreciate you. And until next season. Yes, and to our sponsors, Bill Curry Ford, oh, yes. The Front yes. Cafe, Black in the Bay. Thank you so much for all the support and keeping us on the air. Uh, and of course, to all of you, thank you so much for being part of our morning plan. I didn't say that. Absolutely. We will talk and see you soon. Once again, this is your host, Ms. Keisha Boyd, and my co-host, officially Jorge. The oh, original OJ. Yes, the original OJ. But we're adding a little flavor to your morning blend right here on Mocha in the Morning. Ooh, pop the champagne! Pop the champagne! Ow, ow, ow! Ooh, so blurry. No, no, it's not over yet. Get in focus. Get in focus. Do we're dancing. Get in focus.